Seek it gives me energy when I'm in need. Yeah, he's a vital friend indeed. Oh, he transports energy way over time when I'm in need. All biological processes require energy. Energy is needed to move our muscles, to transport ions or substances across a membrane, and even to make more energy. It is fitting then that there must be a complex way to regulate energy levels in the cell to allow for these biological processes to have immediate access to ATP. Creatine kinase is one enzyme that plays a key role in maintaining cellular energy homeostasis. This works because creatine kinase has different isoforms that are compartmentalized in different places where energy is produced or utilized. Each isoform is responsible for maintaining the ATP-ADP ratio in that region. There are CK isoforms for mitochondria, brain tissue, and for differentiated sacromeric muscle. Here we will explore the mitochondrial creatine kinase, specifically the striated muscle creatine kinase in the mitochondria known as MIBCK. All creatine kinase enzymes, including mitochondrial creatine kinase, catalyze the reversible reaction of ADP and phosphocreatine to ATP and creatine, thereby phosphorylating ADP to regenerate ATP. This reaction functions effectively because phosphocreatine is a high energy compound due to the positioning of its phosphate group. The free energy of hydrolyzing this phosphate group is negative 43.1 kilojoules per mole. Hydrolysis of the gamma phosphate of ATP is negative 30.5 kilojoules per mole. Therefore, it is thermodynamically more favorable to hydrolyze phosphocreatine, and this phosphate can then be transferred to ADP to synthesize ATP. The unfavorable addition of a phosphate onto ADP requires an input of 30.5 kilojoules per mole, which is paid for by the release of 43.1 kilojoules per mole when the high-energy phosphocreatine is hydrolyzed. This yields a net release of 12.6 kilojoules per mole. Therefore, this quick reaction allows for the formation of ATP or ADP depending on the location of CK. The most prominent role of mitochondrial CK is its energy transport function. In order to understand the energy transport mechanism of mitochondrial creatine kinase, we must first understand its structure and localization in the body. Mitochondrial CK is located in the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. It can be free-floating in the intermembrane space or bound to both the inner and outer membrane of the mitochondria, holding them together at a contact site. The structure consists of four identical dimers that come together in a cube-like fashion to form an octamer. This cube-like structure can be seen when looking at the structure from the top, like so. This yields two opposing bottom and top faces that can interact simultaneously with the inner and outer membrane. Additionally, when these dimers come together, there is a channel formed through the membrane where substrates and products can enter the enzyme. The fourfold faces of the octamer have positively charged amino acid residues that can interact with the negatively charged phospholipid head groups. Specifically, residues such as lysine 360, lysine 361, lysine 364, lysine 369, and lysine 380 are present in each monomer to interact with the cardiolipin of the inner membrane. What is interesting is that mitochondrial CK is the only isoform to have evolved into octamer structure, suggesting that CK serves a structural function as well due to its location between the inner and outer membrane. Each monomer consists of eight antiparallel beta sheets flanked by alpha helices as part of the large domain and a smaller alpha helical domain shown in purple towards the middle. The substrate binding site is located in between these domains. There are several residues in these monomers that serve a key role in the catalytic activity. These residues were discovered through observing function after mutagenesis. Residues asparagine 228, glutamine 227, and glutamine 226 are involved in coordinating the magnesium ion necessary for ATP binding and have carboxyl groups that are ionized for binding of creatine and phosphocreatine. Cysteine-278 is a critical residue that acts as a creatine binding site. 
Histidine 92 is close to the gamma phosphate of ATP and cysteine 278 and acts as an acid base catalyst. Tryptophan 223 is located to the adenine of the ATP ADP substrate and is essential in the positioning of the nucleotide. Now that the key structural features of mitochondrial creatine kinase are known, the specific function can be examined. The main mechanism of mitochondrial creatine kinase can be explained in terms of its energy transport system and coupling to oxidative phosphorylation, which produces most of the ATP in cellular respiration. First, ATP made in oxidative phosphorylation is transported out of the mitochondrial matrix through adenine nucleotide translocators, called ANTs. These ANTs work as an antiport system. In order to transfer ATP out of the matrix, ADP must be transferred in from the inner membrane side. As mentioned before, mitochondrial CK optimers are interacting at energy transfer contact sites, where the inner membrane is coming in contact with the outer membrane via these CK optimers. Therefore, the ANTs on the inner membrane and ion selective pores on the outer membrane are both interacting with CK to form what is called an energy channeling complex. Once ATP is tra transported out of the matrix, it is transphosphorylated by the mitochondrial CK to give phosphocreatine. This leaves an ADP in the inner membrane space that is ready for another ADP-ATP antiport reaction. Phosphocreatine leaves the mitochondria through porins that are just beyond the contact site. These porins are in an anion selective state due to high conductance and will not let any creatine through. At the same time that phosphocreatine is leaving, creatine is entering the mitochondria through a porin at the contact site that is in a cation selective state. This replenishes creatine that is needed as a substrate for the CK mechanism. The importance of the energy transport function of mitochondrial CK is to maintain ATP-ADP ratios separately in the mitochondria and the cytosol. This means that there are separate pools of adenine nucleotides that can be regulated separately. If ATP was directly transported out to the cytosol without a mechanism to ensure that ADP remained in the mitochondria, it would cause a depletion of adenine nucleotides and no further ATP could be synthesized. Creatine kinase is therefore critical to the effective utilization and synthesis of ATP. And without it, we would not be able to be us, mammals. CK the bomb, man, I met my mitochondria with the ATP and creatine under his underarm. He said, I can tell you need energy. I can tell by your laziness as far as ATP you got none. I can tell by your long drawn walk. I said, I'm looking for ATP. Have you seen it? My psychic told me that you might have some, but no, no, only phosphocreatine.